it's my first Sunday yellow sticker haul of March. Welcome, March. Uh, oh, out of the way. Right, so how did we do? I spent £2.19. What did I get? I got some cheese. This was £2.99 down to 90p. This stuff's really nice, melted. You can make like a cheese sauce or just melt it on pasta dishes and things. Um, I also got some yoghurt. Yoghurt stickers were weird today. There were some that were really cheap, some that weren't, or that were like, like 20, 30 pence more, and then there was one that was like eight pounds. People just don't seem to care about putting the right stickers on things. So I picked up only the really cheap ones. So I have an Onken Mango Papyra Passion Fruit. I love the Onken Mango yogurts. They're really, really nice. This was, I don't know what this was actually. It says it was 35p and it's now 11p because look, they put the wrong sticker on it. So I don't actually know what this should have been full price. We're just gonna have to go with 35p. And then next to that, I have two of the saver ones. So they were 35p and are 11p, and I got two of those. And the only other thing I bought uh, was some potatoes. This is a 2k bag, was 129, now 96p. And given that I ran out of potatoes three or four days ago, this comes in at the right time. I kept looking at other potatoes and thinking, should I just buy some? And I thought, no, if I just hang on, a deal will turn up. So that's just, that's it. That's all I've bought today. And I will do my usual thing up there so you can see what I would have paid if I bought everything full price, what I've saved. Um, and that's it for Sunday. Lovely day today. Blue sky, sunshine. It's cold, but it's not horribly cold. And um, yeah, I've got a load of YouTube editing to do. What do I have coming up? Um, I think after this one, actual fact, it'll be before this one. I don't know when this is going to come out because I need to put something else with it. But I do have um, something coming up on my, just a little roundup of some of my February expenses and my income and just a few th more thoughts on 2024 and how my income might change I've started because I'm now two months in I've started to do a few predictions um, I've included some information about my YouTube income which has changed and I've also um, added some general information about how my income has changed over the last few years it's interesting to see and it's it's inspiring it's what keeps me going when you see things on little little charts little graphs like that made up that have been made up from my excel spreadsheets it makes me think oh yeah that's a that's, that's a really good thing i did um and i'm going in the right direction so um keep an eye out for that that will probably have already been but if you're now watching this if you go back probably maybe a week you'll probably find um you'll find that um that post and i will probably link it at the end so it make it easier to find anyway so that's that one so, catch you soon. Bye-bye. Already due another haircut. Look at this. Honestly. Grows so fast. I was watching a video the other day on YouTube. It just popped up on my home feed. It wasn't a channel I normally follow. And it was a lady who lives in Australia. Who just found out that her landlord wasn't going to be renewing her tenancy. I don't think there was any particular reason for it. Maybe they decided to sell. Maybe they just wanted to really ramp up the price. And they thought that getting a new tenant in would be the best way to do it. I'm not sure. And she was really gutted about this because she'd lived in this house for years and she considered it home. Renting is an odd one because it's not your home. You're there almost at the discretion 
of whoever owns the home. And I have moved many times. I mean, I've been living in essentially other people's houses since I was 18, which is a long time. I've lived with partners in their homes. I've lived in house shares. I've been a lodger. And the place that I am in now is the first time I have rented somewhere on my own. And if you're in a certain type of situation, renting is not an option. It's the, it, it's the only option. So I can't get a mortgage. Um, in many ways, I don't want to because I have moved a lot and I've never really found the place that I can imagine wanting to spend the rest of my life. Um, if I was going to do that, it will be down near my parents, near my family, but that's an unaffordable pipe dream. And so renting at least gives me the opportunity to, to move around. And I have moved a lot. I mean, even since I moved to this area in 2015, and I was moving on average two times a year until 2018. So that three, for, for three or four years, I was moving twice a year. I would go in as a lodger and it turned out the landlord or the landlady was a bit of a psycho. I'd move somewhere where the area turned out not to be as nice as I thought. I'd move in with a partner and then we'd split up. All sorts of things would happen. So I'm stuck in a rental situation, um, but it's a necessity. And the other thing, of course, is that what we have learned over the last few years is that when a financial crisis hits, you're 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 just a you're just a, a cog in the works. So for landlords who want to put their prices up, they don't care if you can't afford it. That said, if you are uh, living somewhere where you have a mortgage, where you're paying for your home, and you thought you were buying your house, and then maybe you lost your job during the pandemic, and now the interest rate's going through the roof, and you lost your home, or you just couldn't pay your mortgage anymore, they won't sit around waiting for you to, to work it out. Three months or so, and you're out. When you're paying a mortgage, your home is not your home until you've fully paid it off. You are still essentially renting. So it's not secure, and in fact, if things go wrong when you have a mortgage, the fallout from it can be even worse because you've put your time and your effort and your money and your things into that home thinking you'd be there forever and then it gets taken away from you. Now I've been in my place here for six years but I still, I still don't really think of it as a home. I've been lucky that I haven't had to move for six years um, but I'm also fully aware that that could change at any time. If something happens to the letting agency or the landlord, um, I could be on a like a, a two week or a four week notice. If they decide not to renew the tenancy, um, that gives me potentially two or three months of notice. And I'm acutely aware of how quickly things can change. Nothing ever stays the same. And with that in mind, I have always kept in the back of my mind an escape plan. So when I moved in here, thinking that I wouldn't be here that long, um, I mean, when I moved in, because I hadn't had my own place before, I didn't own things like furniture. Um, everything I moved, I could move in the back of my car. And it would all pack down to the back of my car and it might take four or five moves, but everything would go. And so when I moved here, and I knew I had to get furniture, even if I was only going to be for his six months or a year, I needed a bed, I needed a sofa. And I went down to the British Heart Foundation, to their furniture outlet, and bought all my furniture for, I think it was about 220 quid. And I got a sofa suite, and a double bed, and a chest of drawers. And I was sorted because everything else at that time, I had my my workshop, my studio um, in on the edge of the city and 
a lot of the things that were in there that I was using as studio furniture, like bookcases and all that sort of thing, um, I kind of pulled some of it out and turned it into the furniture that's in my where I live now, my, in my property. But everything I own here is gifted or second hand or found, skip dived, um, upcycled and recycled. So there are very few things that I have that are essential to me when I move. Because I now work from home, that is the problem. And it's only the problem because of um, my semi-industrial sewing machine, which is 12 and a half stone of cast iron. And when I moved it in here, I had to hire a man with a van. And between us, we managed to get it out of my studio and in here and up one flight of stairs. I mean, I pulled all the muscles in my arms and for about three days I was quite sore because it's 12 and a half stone of cast iron is, is no joke. But it came in. The problem is that if I had to move, and this is what I was talking about with my escape plan, is that if I had to move, I would have to hire a man with a van to get it out again. And depending on what my, situation was, what my situation was going to be when I moved would depend on what happened to everything else. So I only got this, um, this place because uh, the letting agency were happy for me to pay six monthly, which at the time was the length of my contract. It's now a year, but I still pay six monthly. A lot of places will not do that. They won't hold the money for that long. It makes them a bit jittery and I do that because I don't pass credit checks for rent um, and that's really purely because of my work situation so because I'm self-employed and my income's very up and down they don't trust that I can pay a bill even though I pay all the bills so it's really irritating that rental doesn't count on your credit score and even if you get a reference from your landlord, it's no guarantee that someone else is going to trust you. So, if something happened now, I don't think I would find anywhere to live, primarily because of the way the prices have changed. I think that it's a very, a very difficult market at the moment. I think the prices are too high for what's out there, and the competition is tough. So, you know, you apply for, for somewhere and find there are like a hundred other people all applying for it. And I don't know how much that has changed. I know that last year and the year before, that was a really crazy situation. I don't know how bad that still is. But even so, they're not going to take me over someone else who's got a great job um, and, and earns loads of money and has like really good references, etc, etc. So I don't stand a chance of getting somewhere else unless it's somebody really nice who understands my situation. Which is what happened when I moved in here. The lady that I saw when I came here, we chatted about it. Her dad was self-employed. She understood the situation um, and that helped because we kind of met in the middle on ideas about that. And they just wanted somebody in. Um, so yeah, so I have this kind of game plan that it's very simple. If I had to leave here and I had nowhere else to go, like I couldn't find somewhere or I wasn't getting rental because of my credit score or there was just too much competition or the prices were too high, um, everything that relates to my business I would put into storage. There are lots of storage places around here that are pretty good and I could get storage at a reasonable price. Put everything into storage, it's still accessible, I can still keep selling. Um, the small furniture that I can move myself, like I have lots of um, small bookcases that I can move myself, um, all sorts of bits and pieces like that, that would go into storage and would help me to be more organised in storage. I would pack up the small things that I want to keep and then I would phone British Heart Foundation and tell them to come and take the furniture away. They wouldn't pay me in the same way that I paid them when I moved in, but they will come and take it away for you for nothing because they'll put it back in the shop and sell it to somebody else. So provided you've looked after your things, you're okay there. 
and the only thing I had to buy brand new when I moved in was a washing machine there was no washing machine here and I got that really cheap because where my studio was they uh, they sold uh, appliances so I got a, a nice friends deal on a washing machine they came and installed it for me as well but because I've been here now for six years you know I could theoretically say well you know how long is that washing machine going to last and I could give that to the British Heart Foundation as well if that was a problem to move which sometimes these things are and you're better off just getting rid of stuff rather than having it hanging around your neck so that would make that aspect of it easier and then in terms of where to live, I would probably end up back at my parents until I worked out what to do. But at least the important stuff would be secure. So th there's this, this game plan, this, this get out clause is always in the back of my mind. And normally that would be as renewal time comes up, are they going to load up the fees? I mean, I've been quite lucky. I've had two rental rises so last year and the year before but they were only 50 pounds a month so it was doable if they did it again I would still stay for another year we'll see what happens um, but if there was this sudden like it's going to be 900 quid a month or we're, you know we're shutting down we're selling up then then that would be me out of somewhere to live I suspect but never assume that things are going to stay the same. Things can change so fast. And have happened to me on many occasions where things have changed very fast. So always hedge your bets. Until you have paid off your mortgage, that home is not yours. If you stop paying your mortgage, they'll come and take your house away. So it's not a given that just because you have this wonderful fabled thing called a mortgage that you're secure. Because you may not pay. That's in, that's entirely down to you being at the mercy of your employer, at the mercy of economic stresses, at the mercy of pandemics, as we now know. And it certainly pays to have enough in emergency savings. Um, and I think that's a lot of the problem, that people with mortgages, with jobs, just didn't see this coming and, and weren't prepared. I've um, I've got six months of emergency savings now uh, stashed away in an interest savings account but I've also topped it up with a bit more because you can never have enough money on tap if something goes wrong that's my feeling and now that I'm locking more of my savings into things like a pension where I can't get access I need to be absolutely sure that I've put aside as much instant access money as I think I might need to enable me to get back on my feet. It's sad to say, but you need to look after number one because no one else is going to do it. You can't rely on the powers that be or the benefit system or social care or anything to help you because these systems are breaking down. They have too many people asking for their help and there don't appear to be any budgets a lot of the staff just don't care they're not in it for the right reasons and you know I, I watch these documentaries about entire families just living in bed sits and in America they're living in motels and and sleeping on on, on floors in, in family homes you know friends and family and it doesn't matter how many blooming kids you have if they're going to chuck you out on the street, they'll chuck you out on the street. And all of this comes down to money. If you have enough spare money, then at least you can put yourself into a hotel for a few nights or get yourself across to wherever family live. Put your stuff in storage. Get rid of stuff. Um, it's really tough, but you have to... You have got to put yourself first... Imagine that no one's going to help you. Do you have enough money? And it all everything boils down to money at the end of the day. No matter what anyone says, everything comes down to whether or not you have enough money to get yourself out of a hole. 
and although my income has been low I've tried to be incredibly careful about things like savings about what spare I have because you never know when you're going to need it and at least that's one less thing I worry about now if I suddenly got you know notice from the landlord to say they're selling up it would be a massive pain to move but I'm not going to end up on the street because at least I have the money to deal with storage to move stuff and at least I have family to go to in the short term until I sort out what I'm going to do so it's horrible when you hear of people losing their homes through no fault of their own. This girl was paying her rent, she's got a good job, there's no problem, she's never been a problem tenant. Presumably the landlord's just had enough and just wants out of the game. But the person who suffers at the end of, the, of it is the tenant. And I feel for people like that who've done nothing wrong. And that's happening to an awful lot of people still. Anyway, so make your game plan. Don't always assume the worst. I don't, I don't think a fatalist approach is a, is a good idea. But plan for the worst. Plan for the worst possible situation you can imagine in terms of, you know, like where you live or whatever. Squirrel away as much spare money as you possibly can. Stop wasting it on iPhones and KFC and whatever else other junk you spend your money on like Starbucks and what have you stick it in the bank have some semblance of security in knowing that you have spare funds there if you need it because no one else is going to help you look after number one protect yourself it's worth doing never fly by the seat of your pants because you never know where it's going to end anyway that's my that's my advice for the day. <laughs> Trust yourself, not somebody else. Speak to you soon. Bye bye. Afternoon. It's Monday. Monday morning has been really busy. I had to hop back on that market research survey this morning. There was a, a technical problem with the some of the tasks that I needed to do. It's resolved now. I also made another sale on my Shopify store two sales actually. Thank you, you know who you are. I'm hoping this is the upward turn for my, for my shop. Glorious today. to the post office. But when I get back I'm going to open some windows because it's warmer outside than I realised. I think it's warmer outside than it is in my flat so I need to get some of that lovely air in. It's a bit breezy. I've been told off a few times for wind. the nature of going outside that there will be wind but it is a bit annoying and you don't know until after you've recorded how bad it is or even if there is any and by the time you've done the recording I'm not going to go back and do it again but I'm trying to be more observant of wind in my outdoor videos Monday and Tuesday I've also been busy for sewing work so I have uh, been doing the next set of alterations for the couple that I do the cleaning for the lady so 
So today I'm cutting down trousers. I've been doing all sorts of bits for her this week. Last week I did, I think it was five or six, uh, five pairs of pyjamas and a couple of pairs of trousers. This week I've been altering the buttons on a coat for her and also taking up some more trousers and she's slowly working her way through her wardrobe. We have some other pairs of trousers that need to be taken in on um, the hip line. They're too wide on the hip. So once, um, she's not been very well lately, so she hasn't been able to like put on different clothes and allow me to kind of pin stuff and things like that. But, um, so yeah, so I've been, I've had a couple of nice busy afternoons doing alterations work, which is great. I've had another sale on Etsy. So this afternoon, once I've finished all this, I'm going to pop over to the post office and do that. Things feel a little bit more buoyant. Today feels like another lovely spring day. It's full of energy this morning. I was doing my housework at half nine, which is rare. Um, <laughs> uh, but shows that spring is nearly here and I'm getting my energy back. I'm sleeping heavier at night, but I seem to be more alert during the day, which I suppose is a good thing. Um, so this week is turning into a nice busy one. Tomorrow's clean. I've got to go an hour earlier because they've got to be out um, before I get there and I don't have a key. So um, everything's going to happen an hour earlier tomorrow, which is which is fine. We can cope with that. Um, we're going to see how the weather goes. I think it's going to turn by the end of the week. I was hoping to do a little day trip out and take you along for the ride, but um, weather's going to be on the change again. I'm just waiting for a nice day when I'm not busy when I can just take the day out and not think about anything else. Anyway, so we'll wait for that to happen. It will come. Uh, so, yeah, so that's um, Monday and Tuesday pretty much complete. Just busy work days, which is nice. Nice, nice to be productive in, um, in actual paying ways. Makes a nice change. Good stuff. <laughs> afternoon. Just been to the post office and we sorted that Etsy thing out. It's a noisy road this. Sandwich between a main road and a motorway. Joy. It's practically dresses weather today. Look, no hats. Open coats. So warm. Thought I was recording and turned out I wasn't. So you missed plants that are sprouting shoots and birds singing. And now I'm coming back onto another busy main road. Here, my first lawnmower of the year. That's the sound of spring. People get their lawnmowers out. It's a very nostalgic sound, though. Like
Right, time for a Tuesday evening Morrison's haul. Today I spent £1.99. Didn't get very much. There aren't any vegetables on offer at the moment. Haven't had very much lately. Um, and I'm almost out of fresh veg. I've got a couple of things in the freezer, but I'm determined to hold out. What I did get is mixed peppers. They're already chopped up, but these will last a couple of days. I'll probably put them in water. Uh, they were a pound, now 25p. There are 800 grams there. Don't often get peppers, so I thought I'd give that a go. Uh, a tin of spaghetti hoops dented. Worth 47p, now 36p. Always good to have something like this in the cupboard because you never know. Uh, what else did I get? There was a lot of deli stuff on the discount. So what I did get is chicken spring rolls. There's a katsu chicken spring rolls. These were £2.75 down to 69p. There are four of them in there. I think that stir fried up with mixed peppers. Um, uh, I've got some onion, and I've even got I have got half a bag of potatoes left. Actually, will actually make quite a nice meal. I also got vegetable samosas. These were two seventy five, but also down to sixty nine p. Um, they will warm up nicely in the frying pan, and they'll be good for a snack with a dip. I've got all sorts of like mayo type dips and things because I hoard all this sort of stuff so that was the lot as usual up here will be a retail price value and how much I've saved buying them on yellow sticker which isn't always is pretty good and um, that's it for Tuesday that's the end of Tuesday and then tomorrow we will begin again I thought I would give you a little tour of what I'm going to do with the things that I was talking about in that last Morrison's haul. Um, I am probably going to go to Morrison's Thursday evening and see if there's any vegetables. We are pretty low on the veg front, but I do like a challenge. So when I get low on stuff, it does make me think harder about the things I've got in the fridge, in the freezer, in the cupboards, how can I turn this into a meal? Because when you've got lots of everything, you get lazy. So what I'm going to do, I have my chicken spring rolls here, which I will lightly fry up in the frying pan. But before I do that, I have the peppers. I'm not going to do all of those. I also have an onion. I found three of these at the bottom of the bag where I keep my potatoes. I'm not going to do potato today. I want to make things last a little bit. But I do have the remains of some cabbage. So, this is what I'm going to do. Uh, and I'm going to move you around so that you can see what I am actually going to do. Okay, so, there we are. So, first of all, a little bit of oil in the pan. Bear in mind, I am making tea here, not lunch. It's now Wednesday, it's almost four o'clock. I'm doing my intermittent fasting um, teas between four and five where possible, not always possible. Um, because I was out cleaning today, I didn't have lunch. So this is like a, a smaller meal. So what we're going to do first, we are going to chop up our onion. into the pan. I'm going to 
open up our peppers and we're going to put a good sizable amount of these into the pan as well. Very rare to get peppers on a deal, which is why I grabbed them. Um, I'm not going to use them all, I want to save some of them for tomorrow's dinner. So they are going to go into a jug. They won't last long because they're chopped, they're not whole and fresh. They've been sitting chopped probably off the deli counter all day yesterday. Now I'm going to rinse them through, just to freshen them up. Pop some fresh water in there, and then these can go in the fridge overnight, and it'll just help them stay fresher. throwing stuff away once I've got it. Okay, so there are our um, peppers and our onion and I'm going to set this up to fry. I'm also going to fine chop just a bit of this cabbage. I want to make this all these greens. I want this to last. So I'm just going to do a bit just to add a little bit of colour greenery. That can go back in water where I've had it to stay fresh. And now you can see I'm going to fry that on a high heat. There's some water in there so That'll add to it. Busy out there today, driving. Something's kicked off. And I'm going to add two of these spring rolls. They're quite big. And as I say, I try not to overdo it at tea time. Because eating too much late in the day plays havoc with my sleep. I also still have those vegetable samosas which I have been eating as they come. These are such a nice snack. It's better than my usual option which would be bread with some peanut butter on it. It's nice to get something that's a bit different for a change. Getting unusual tastes in something like that is a nice rare treat. And I enjoy it more, more when it's something that I don't have very often. Mm -mm. So, now I'm going to add the cabbage. water that's in there I'm going to let that reduce down until I'm ready to put the spring onions in which I'll put in alongside and lightly fry those. And that is basically my main course for dinner. Desserts have been a bit odd this last week. I haven't had any cake so I've been trying not to eat. Well, I don't have any mince pies left. They're all well gone. Um, and I'm trying not to eat other things that I make. What I have been doing, I had that massive chocolate Swiss roll that I bought last week and I have I've had lots of Savers natural yogurt and what I've been doing is cutting two slices of 
the Swiss roll. I've been setting up a bain marie which is a saucepan with water and another bowl inside and I've been putting the yogurt in, warming that through and then adding the Swiss roll. Because I like a warm dessert at the moment, I'm, I don't do it for lunch so in the evening I quite like having a warm dessert because it gets colder in the evenings and so I could have made some custard to go with that Swiss roll but I'd rather save the milk and actually warmed through <laughs> natural yoghurt actually isn't that bad. I know it sounds terrible, I will improvise with whatever's there, whatever needs using, whatever it is, you know, cheap, cheerful and for me that's a perfectly acceptable dessert. I am not fussy and I love to do weird creative things with food in the kitchen. So that's why I've been having Swiss roll with warmed natural yoghurt and I've really enjoyed it and I make zero apologies for that. So let's move you round. Should be able to see that okay. And we're just going to keep letting this reduce. Reduce, reduce, reduce. I might add a splash of soy sauce because why not? I always keep soy on hand because I tend to have noodles every so often and I've got lots of noodles still in the freezer. Those have reduced down now. So we're going to pop the spring rolls in. Now what you can do if you want something to cook in the pan and something to cook slower, if you just pull your pan away from the heat so that only the thing you want to cook is over it, um, that will stop that burning quicker than that cooks, if that makes any sense. It's a bit like moving things around in your oven, but you're doing it on the hob. And we're just going to let these fry through. And pop the heat a little bit. It doesn't matter if they're not completely cooked through because they are pre-cooked, they're not raw chicken. I could have eaten them straight out of the packet if I wanted to. But I like warm dinners, I'm still at that stage of spring, winter, where having hot food is a nice way to end the day. I'm just going to finish off the whole thing by rewarming those peppers through.
Right, this is going to be my last entry for this vlog. Thursday afternoon. Going to Morrison's. I was going to go later, but it got to half past three. I just thought, uh, I'm going to go now. It's quite cold and dark again today, so I feel like we've gone back into winter a little bit. Um, what did I spend today? I spent £2.72. Well, I would have done, except that... I got paid a £10 e-gift card voucher for doing a survey and I signed it to Morrison's which means that the next £10 worth of my food shopping at Morrison's will cost me nothing. So that was £2.72 I would have spent but in fact all of this is now effectively free. So what are we doing? Well, our patience was rewarded. We have vegetables again. First thing. We finally got a broccoli. Was 79p. Boy, they've gone up in price. Down to 55p, which is the old price you used to be able to get a broccoli for. So that was fun. I'm actually paying normal prices again. I got two Swedes. These were both 21 pence each. Always good in a stir fry or a casserole. I also got a bag of... Um, sweet potatoes wasn't going to get this and I thought well I haven't got much in they were £1.19 and they were down to 89p so that's pretty good two bags of parsnips the wonky parsnips these were 55p each down to 22p and again there are random stickers so these were the only two bags at 22p the rest were I think 32p. I don't know what's going on in Morrison's at the moment but they just don't seem to care. And then the last thing I got was a lovely tub of best coleslaw. This was £1.65 down to 42 pence so that will make meals a little bit more interesting. Uh, this evening I will be having the second of the chicken uh, spring roll and pepper mixes uh, and then that'll that be all done. I made a, a pork casserole today with the last bag of the soup mix uh, packs that you can get in the supermarket that I put in the freezer. We go through phases. I haven't seen any in ages, but I think as we move into spring and warmer weather, we'll start to see more of those on the shelves. I think people are probably still doing their winter stews at the moment. So the last one of those is out the freezer. And I used up the last of my carrots and uh, a potato uh, threw in a couple of handfuls of lentils and um, a bit of um, pork belly which I had which I divided up into sections and put in the freezer that's really nice and that is probably going to last me three days so that's a really good hearty warm lunch for three days so I will put up here what I would have spent at retail so you can see uh, how much that would have cost me and also what I would have saved had I actually spent any of it at all but in fact this hasn't cost me anything and I still have £7.28 left on the card so that means that the next £7.28 of things that I buy in Morrison's will be free so that's going to really get my food budget down for March which is good because I've had a couple of expensive months um, and yeah a good one and that's a good place to end this this set of entries for the week uh, I'm not sure when this will be going up but it won't be too far behind and I've got a few other things going up as well so I hope you enjoy and um, I'll speak to you again soon very soon bye bye have a good week see ya